you are definitely not waifu material. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we are counting down our picks for the top 10 most annoying girls in anime. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at the female characters in anime who are pretty good at getting on all 100 billion nerves in the human body. Whether their purpose is to be humorously annoying, or it's an unfortunate byproduct of their terrible personality, we'd be a whole lot happier if these girls had just a little chill. A little splash of it. Essence of chill. As always, there's gonna be some light spoilers, so no blaming me. You've been warned. I'm Todd Habercorn, a Watch Mojo soldier ready to take on the forces of the Top 10 universe armed with my vocal cords. Having been in several of the shows I'm gonna mention here, I know a thing or two about shiny boobed annoying anime females. Let's get ready to mojo! Number 10. Julieta Juris, Mobile Suit Gundam, Iron Blooded Orphans. There are so many examples of great female characters in this show. You have Kundelia, a spokesperson for peace in a time rich with political strife. And Amida, a badass, beautiful mercenary whose idea of free love was actually refreshing. Then, you have Julieta, a soldier in service to series villain Rustal Elion, whose attitude could not be more grating. She tries to project herself as strong, yet is so reliant and devoted to her beloved master Rustal that you can hardly call her independent. She's got plot armor as thick as her head, and no redeemable qualities, folks. Number nine, Nui Harame, Kill a Kill. I said, get out of my way! What? The hell? She blocked a three-star? Without a uniform? Don't let that cheerful smile fool you. This Lolita is a cold-blooded killer. As Ragyo's right-hand woman, Nui's meddling caused nothing but chaos for the inhabitants of Honoji Academy. Go back to being a naked monkey, sweetie. Impossible! What's most infuriating about her, aside from the incessant taunting that rivals even a AAA Reddit post, is that she's so damn powerful that she can get away with practically anything. Honestly, how are you supposed to compete with cartoon physics? Trying to have a serious anime fight over here. Kamehame, come on! <laughs> Number eight, Kuruko Shirai. A certain franchise. Huh? Judgment knows your crimes now. I am arresting you. The charges are destruction of property and burglary. Whether she's making cameos in a certain magical index or plaguing us with her shrill voice in a certain scientific railgun, we really wish this particular esper would take it down a notch for the sake of Academy City. While she technically holds the position of being Mikoto's bestie, we rather the term crazed stalker. Shall we drink? It has a nice ring to it. Seriously, all this girl ever does is throw herself at the Electro Master in the hope of getting some. That's creepy. Just creepy. Huh? <laughs> hey! Number seven, Kirino Kosaka, Oremo. Willing to step on everyone, anyone, or all the ones to keep her otaku life a secret, not only is Kirino the worst kind of hypocrite, but the fact she goes out of her way to ruin her brother's every romantic endeavor is just icing on the crap cake. I'll still eat it though. Yeah, said brother is an idiot for deciding to go ahead and pick her in the end, but we'll always consider this little pest the evil mastermind behind it all. Go to hab or hell, Kirino, and tell him I sent ya. <laughs> Number 
six, Niaruko. Niaruko, crawling with love. Ah, yes. When HP Lovecraft's Nyarlothep gets put through the old anime conversion device, it becomes a different kind of terrifying. And we're not talking seeing your grandma with no makeup terrifying either. Speaking a million words a minute and unable to complete a single sentence without a reference of some description, Nyaruko is a living, breathing meme machine of an outer god. And when she's not bombarding us with catchphrases, she's harassing Mahiro for some inner species snoo snoo. No amount of JoJo quotes will make you any less annoying, Niaruko. <laughs> Number five, Maria Ushimoria, Umi Neko when they cry. Sure, we feel sorry for the poor kid, being the daughter of Rosa and whatnot, but as soon as she's given a glimpse of the macabre, she becomes all kinds of irritating, going on and on about Beatrice one minute, then telling her whole family they're gonna die the next. And the crying, my God, the crying. If you ever hang out with her, wear your suit of armor made of tissues, people. But you know what's really annoying? That catchphrase. Remember, folks, bad parenting may turn your child into a bloodthirsty, witch-obsessed psycho. You have been warned. Number four, Nina Einstein, Code Geass. Please, wait for me, Princess Euphemia. I'll avenge you, I swear. Look, Nina, real talk here. Just because the princess you used to have a huge lady boner for ended up getting gunned down, it doesn't give you the excuse to try and detonate a school with a nuclear reactor. Zero, Princess Euphemia will be avenged! <laughs> In spite of her genius, her mentally unstable mind and hardcore prejudice painted her as an unlikable character pretty early on, to the point where her little redemption arc at the end of the show didn't exactly have us cheering. After all, we were forced to watch her get it on with Table Coon. No one should be subjected to that, unless you're the world's biggest IKEA fan. Number three, Rebecca Hawkins. Yu-Gi-Oh! Beg your pardon? You've got my blue eyes white dragon, now give it back to me! Huh? There were so many filler characters in this series, they could populate an entire deck. D-E-C-K, deck. This begs the question, out of all of them, why was Rebecca the one to keep coming back? She's a brat of a character who somehow is considered a top duelist in America, even managing to technically get in a win against Yugi after he surrendered because, you know, friendship and all that. Can we please get back to defeating flamboyant villains in a children's card game now? Thanks. I don't need a teddy bear, because now I have a boyfriend to protect me. Oh, excuse me, a boyfriend? Number two, Chi Chi. Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I spoke too soon. You shouldn't have spoken at all. Now get in there and take his place. <laughs> when Bulma and Vegeta have the healthier relationship, then you know something has gone very wrong. After bagging herself the universe's strongest hubby, Chi Chi went on to annoy the crap out of fans with how she seemed to think she could have a totally normal life in spite of her husband's world saving duties. I swear, is it too much to ask? to have a normal dinner where we don't smash glasses and bend silverware and break all the furniture? A white picket fence is all fine and dandy, but it doesn't mean jack if the planet gets blown up because you are forcing your Saiyan husband to get a driver's license, and if he didn't make an appointment at the DMV beforehand, look out! And if you don't, you'll have to cook your own meals from now on, understand? Mm -hmm. Number one, Umaru Doma, Himato. Umaru-chan. 
Strangle, must not strangle, must not strangle. Yes, this demon in an orange hoodie may not exactly be the worst female character to crawl its way out of the primordial soup, but holy hell, wrapped in kale and dipped in poo, does she take the crown for most annoying? <laughs> While she maintains the persona of a perfect student, as soon as she gets home, she transforms into a ball of ear-piercing annoyance. Lazy, selfish, and way too loud. No amount of cuteness can distract us from just how vexing Umaru truly is. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.